recording now. All right, here we go. So uh, again, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for spending some time with me this afternoon uh, talking about discovery education. Uh, my name is Tim Leister. I am an instructional technology specialist here at IE13. Um, I am also what's called a DEN star uh, person. So what that means is I've gone through some discovery education training myself, gone through as an ambassador and know a little bit more about the inside and outside of discovery education. Uh, my background is in science, which is why I really gravitate towards uh, discovery education. I was a science teacher at Garden Spot High School for 10 years before becoming the instructional technology specialist and coordinator there for uh, the past 13 years. So I've been here at IU 13 since April. And uh, one of the tools that I was really assigned to as part of our instructional media services group is the discovery education um, experience that we provide to all of our school districts. So here's just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a Penn State graduate, so I'm a Penn State football fan. I'm a Penn State dad. Uh, my daughter is a sophomore up there right now. I'm also a former golf coach. So uh, if, you, if I'm not working or uh, in classrooms, you can probably find me outside at the, uh, the golf course somewhere. OK, so uh, let me start by getting into a little bit about discovery education. So here we go. What you teach matters. How they learn matters. Connecting with your students is what you do best, and nothing can stand in the way of that. But what if you could take that connection even further and spark something amazing? This is Discovery Education. You know we have exciting, exclusive content, but did you know that we have so much more than video? We've got reading passages, images, and interactives. We've even got podcasts. And if you're looking for professional learning support, we have instructional strategies, ready to use lessons, and one of the largest educator communities in the world. We partner with the biggest brands out there to get your students engaged and excited and to help every student learn. Differentiation tools are built right in. Our content reflects a wide range of diverse cultures and views. And because the world is always changing, we add new resources every day. So keep doing what you do best and we'll keep you connected to what matters most. All right, so if you uh, have been in discovery education before or just coming to it for the first time, as they really highlighted in the video, it is much, much more than just videos. Uh, it's background and it's really best known for the video content that's in there, uh, but they've really expanded over the years and just recently have updated their platform to also expand some of the tools and offerings that are in there. So more than 200,000 resources can be found in Discovery Education, uh, over 100,000 videos and video segments, but also texts, instructional resources, images, and other interactives that can be found in there. So these are our goals really for today. Uh, I could spend three hours talking about Discovery Education and showing you all the different aspects to it, but this will just give you a taste as to what's available to you so hopefully you can dive deeper in, or if you need to, you can reach out to me and I can help you uh, with anything else that you're trying uh, to find in there. So what I'd like to do first is talk a little bit just how we search through all of those 200,000 resources and organize them in a way so you can use them and have them ready when you need to teach to your students. Also, I wanna show you how you can create or find those existing what are called studio boards and their new interactive quizzes and assessments that you can engage students with in your learning. And then finally, how you can support uh, your own professional growth after this 45 minutes, uh, how you can go find more resources or connect with other educators 
uh, along the way. So again, one of the things I love about Discovery Education is they're really teacher focused. It's not just a collection of resources. It is a collection of learning experiences, teaching strategies. They have educators that are part of their organization that build these tools so that teachers don't necessarily have to go out find the resources and then create the learning experiences for the students. So one of my goals that isn't even listed on here is for at the very least, when you're looking for a video or an interactive to use with your students, automatically we go to YouTube because it's very easy, it's searchable, but the content on there, as many of us know, is not always vetted. It's not always easily accessible and it's not professional or age appropriate all the time either. But Discovery Education has a way of searching and filtering and vetting the content that's in there to make sure it's high quality and it's best for your students. So if I do nothing else today, hopefully um, you'll leave today by thinking, you know what, I need a video on this topic or I need uh, a multimedia for this that would help uh, teach this particular lesson. I'm going to go to Discovery Education. All right, so the first thing I'd like to do is talk about how we discover and organize inside what's called my DE. So all of you within IU 13, whether you're watching live or watching the recording, have access to Discovery Education through your school. And each school has a slightly different single sign-on to how you access Discovery Education. Some schools use Clever, some schools use Google. Uh, however you log into Discovery Education is really going to be determined by how uh, your school district has set up the single sign-on. And Discovery Education at one point was only available just to teachers. It no longer is. It's available not only to teachers in the district, but also to students in the district. Uh, so you can use it as a resource for students to search as well. Often YouTube is somewhat restricted or blocked in a lot of different school districts. So when you're looking or asking students to find some digital content, uh, you can't just send them out to YouTube to do searches but you can send them into Discovery Education to do searches uh, because again, it's only educational content and it's also all school appropriate. Okay, but let's start out here by looking at the Discovery Education homepage. Again, if you haven't looked at it recently, it's gonna look perhaps uh, very different than it has in the past. Uh, up here at the top, you're gonna see kind of your, uh, your big buttons as to where you can get to to access things quickly. Uh, you can kind of watch today or you're welcome to also log into your version of Discovery Education and follow along. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to do both at the same time. Uh, the one button you're not going to have most likely is the admin dashboard button that I have over here. Uh, but you will have the My Classrooms and My Content button along with the new quiz button here and the relatively new studio and assessment filters built in here. Okay, as we look through the the homepage, yours again may be structured a little bit different than mine because yours is customized to your individual browser and how you've logged in and your viewing history. Uh, so one of the first things you're going to see on there is this brand new activity center, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. They put it uh, right in the front center here so nobody can miss it. Uh, and we'll explore that in just a few minutes. Uh, but notice here, you're going to see the recently viewed. So as you discover and search inside of Discovery Education, whether you're looking for a channel, a board, whatever it might be, and we'll talk about what the differences between those terms are, you're going to find them in your recently viewed section right in here. This just for you section is kind of based on what you teach and the subjects that you're looking for. Discovery Education is going to make some suggestions for you uh, to, to perhaps uh, find something that you didn't necessarily know you were looking for. And then down below, here we see what are called the My Channels section. The word channels is similar to how YouTube defines the word channels. So a channel is a collection of multimedia and digital resources around the same topic. So for example, there's a student learning activities channel right here, a virtual field trips channel. These are ones that I've decided to subscribe to so that if I am looking for something in that particular topic, I can go to that channel and I can find the most recent videos. If I scroll all the way down, I will also find some staff picks and I might find some curriculum packs. Uh, depending upon your school district, some of you subscribe 
to some of these, but these are additional add-ons to discovery education. STEM Connect, history, science, and coding are three of those. And again, you may have one, two, three, or none of those listed here in your curriculum packs, uh, depending if your school district has paid uh, a little bit extra for that. So what's nice about the homepage is you have the ability to customize this. Uh, the top right button here allows you, if you would like those curriculum packs to be right up top, or you'd like the My Channel section to be at the top, you have the ability to customize just by dragging and dropping to put the items in your home page in any order that you'd like. Okay. Uh, the search bar is the most powerful part of this. That's at the very top. You see the discovery education icon in the top left corner. That's how you can always get back to the home page. Um, I'm also going to mention this little icon in the top right. This is what's called the quick list. And similar to Google, they have a waffle here that takes you to at any time any of the buttons that you see up here at the top. All right, if I need to get into my profile or see my account or even sign out, I can click on that top right hand button right here. All right. So the first thing that we always want to do when we go into discovery education is use the power of the search bar. The power of the search bar will take you to topics. Uh, and once we are in there, it's going to then allow us to start searching and looking for and drilling down to find the actual content that we're looking for. So as a for former Earth and Space Science teacher, I always love to teach about tornadoes. So I'm just gonna type that in the search bar. It's gonna take me to the search engine with inside of Discovery Education. And right away, you're gonna see uh, the 461 results that I got just about tornadoes. All right, so you don't really have time to search through those 461 uh, topics. It's gonna to sort them by how it thinks you'd like them by relevancy or perhaps by most popular. You can search over here, which is how the sort will take place. But the power of the search here allows me to search on the left where I can drill down further by individual topics. I can drill down by languages. If I'm an ESL teacher and looking for uh, specific language uh, videos, uh, I, can, I can search that way. If I'm looking for those that are specifically primary sources, closed captioning, which most of them have, or if I'm looking for uh, those that are more new or for a specific publisher, I can drill down and search that way. Along the top, you can see the grade level bands that you can search by as well. If you're one of the primary teachers who's just looking for K-2 content, you can click that button here. If you're teaching more a high school science class, you can click on the 9 to 12. And then along the top, this is the different terminology for the types of uh, resources that are inside of Discovery Education. All right, so right now it's set to all. Uh, videos is the most popular uh, because that's probably the, the largest number and the most well-known that Discovery Education has. You'll see because it's highlighted, there are interactives available. There are full lessons available, activities available. The channel, it's showing the one right here. And then I can drill down and find individual images as well. So I'll start out just by filtering by grades nine to 12. So it's taken my results down to 147. And it's also kind of filtered through some of the results that I have right here. So automatically, as I look through what's come back in my search results, here's where I'm going to see these words that indicate what I am looking for. So again, this is a channel right here. Uh, that channel is a collection of multiple videos. This is one individual image. You see here I have a full video as opposed to a video segment. What I love about this too is it puts the time that that video is at the top. So of course we're always looking for certain videos that have a certain amount of time. Sometimes we don't have an hour to teach about tornadoes, but maybe we do have 10 minutes to teach about uh, tornadoes. So these video segments are often part of full videos, but it puts them in the search as well. So as I scroll down through, you'll also notice the CC button is listed there in the thumbnail. That means closed captioning. And then you can also see if it has a related materials 
uh, icon that goes along with it. That means there's some teacher resources that are part of that. So again, as I look through here, I see some reading passages. I see other video segments, um, all different types of multimedia that's available. All right, so I'm just going to pick one of these. I'm going to go ahead and click on this video segment called Storms because it's going to bring me into, again, a slightly different version of Discovery Education. Again, if you haven't been in here, um, the interface is a little bit different. Uh, so very quickly, I can see in here, uh, I can just hit the play button and I can automatically start watching that video very quickly. All right, so if I'm going to do a whole group lesson and I'm going to project it up onto the screen, very easy for me to go in here and play the video and have the ability to go full screen so I can show it to the entire uh, class nice and large. All right, but the other things that I want to show you here is you have the ability to also speed it up or slow it down. You have the ability here to turn on captioning. Notice that captioning sometimes comes in multiple language, which is fantastic. Again, if you have uh, students that English is not their first language and they're all watching the same video, perhaps on their computers, they can turn on the closed captioning in their individual language. All right, speaking of that, from a literacy perspective, you also have a full transcript here that follows along. If it's a day for extreme weather, you'd better be careful. Every year, storms of So again, if you have students who are learning to read or struggling readers, having that live transcript to go along with the video, if they're watching it on their own devices, uh, can be a real powerful tool to help them learn to go along with it. You can even search through that transcript if you're looking for individual words, and it will take you to that part of the video. Within this seven and a half minute video segment. Uh, you can see there are some other ones built in. So actually not within this one, sorry, but within the entire larger video, there are other segments that are associated with this individual video. So it's showing me the other segments that could go along with it. Uh, you notice this one has a teacher's guide that goes right along with this particular video. So maybe there's some questions on here that I wanna ask during the video. Uh, there's some activities, there's even a less sample lesson plan that goes along with this individual video. So real helpful if you're trying to plan out an activity, you might get some great ideas to go along with that individual teacher guide. Okay, now over here on the right hand side, this is where you can start to use the ability to organize everything. All right, I'll actually start here at the bottom. Uh, for most of you, the, uh, the bandwidth and the internet connection that you have through Discovery Education is going to be powerful enough just to hit the play button to watch it in class and stream it directly. However, there are times when uh, you know, certain buildings don't have that great video uh, connection. Um, so maybe if you're concerned about that, you do have the ability for most of the videos to download them to your computer. So, you know, you have that uh, teacher observation coming up, the principal's coming in and you wanna make sure that it works. Sometimes perhaps downloading the video to your computer uh, can kind of take away that concern about the, uh, you know, the, uh, the ability for it to play for that particular time frame. all right? I wouldn't uh, get in the habit of necessarily downloading all the videos and saving them to your computer because it's gonna take up a lot of space on your computer over time. Uh, but if you download it, say to your desktop, and just use it for that particular class and then delete it knowing that it's gonna be in discovery education later. Um, it's one way to kind of hold on to it. All right, the other things that I wanna to mention to you now are these two areas right here. Uh, because maybe you're doing a little search for tomorrow's lesson or next week's lesson and you wanna make sure that you know where to find this individual video. So the two ways you can do this are by adding it to your quick list and also to saving it to my content. Okay, so I'm actually gonna open up Discovery Education in a new tab and go back to the home page so I can show you the difference between these two. All right, so you'll notice this button right here on the home page is called My Content. All right, the other one 
that it referenced was up here by what's called the quick list. Okay, so when you're looking at an individual video, you can either add it to your quick list or save it to my content, or you can do both. So your my content section right here from your homepage is a way for you to organize discovery education in a way that you can find these videos at a later time. Uh, because we know that we're, we're working on a video or something, we're saving it, we find a great video, but we wanna organize it in a way that we can find it next year or next semester when we teach this class again. So I would really highly recommend that that be one of the things you start with is go into the My Content section and create some folders in there based upon how you teach. If it were me teaching an earth science class, I might create a unit one uh, principles of science, unit two, the rock cycle, those types of things that kind of match what I teach. That way, when I find a video or I find a resource in discovery education, I can put it in the appropriate folder so I can find it later. All right, so this my content section right in here is only visible to you. You're the only one that has access to that organization. Uh, so it's very easy just over here on the right hand side to add a folder. And as you add those folders, then when you find a video here and you click save to my content, it's gonna bring up that same video folder structure that you have. So I could go into earth science here and I could say add. So now that storms video, when I go to my content and I refresh and I look in my earth science folder, right there's that storms uh, video and the date in which I added it right here. So I can actually see uh, when I added it last to it. So that's kind of nice because sometimes like, oh, I know I added this like two years ago, but you can search through and actually see the last time you added it to that particular section. All right, so this My Content section, again, follows you, follows your account. Uh, but because your account is also associated with an individual school and district, you'll notice there are tabs up here at the top called School Content and District Content. So if you're thinking larger scale than just your classroom, uh, maybe you're on a team uh, or a curriculum team that's building out content and you want to put things in here that's easily findable for your colleagues within your school or within your district, you can add things here and then anybody within your school or district will be able to find those later. Uh, so that's really nice. Uh, again, if you're working together with a group of teachers and you want to create a folder in here called first grade science uh, marking period one, and you could put some folders in there and rather than everybody having to go and search those individual lessons themselves, they can find it in that folder and uh, very easily uh, connect it. And if they'd like, they could save it to their individual content or they could just keep, keep it in the school content as well. Okay, now this is a little bit different than what we call the quick list up here in the top right-hand corner. The quick list, think about this, is something that you're gonna be using uh, relatively frequently. Let's say again, you're planning for tomorrow and you found this good storms video right here and I'm gonna add it to my quick list and it just went from a two to a three in the top right hand corner. So this quick list is meant to be, okay, these are the videos that I'm using right now. It's something that I'm not gonna use in the future but because I'm using them this week or this unit, I wanna make sure they're very easily available to me because that quick list is uh, in that top right hand corner all the time. I can even place these in the order that I want. So when I'm planning out my lesson, if I have multiple video clips in here to show, I can reorder them in the quick list in any way that I'd like. All right, and right from here too, after I've used that video or I've moved on to the next lesson or unit, I can actually remove it from my quick list. Okay, so I've taken it out of my quick list. However, it's still, in that earth science folder right here in my content. So again, think of your my content as more of your digital filing cabinet, places for you to house all of your videos so you can find them at a later time. But think of your quick list as where do I go to find those individual videos and place them in the order that I want because I'm using them right away. All right, so as you start to explore discovery education, 
really highly recommend you keep things organized because if you just add things to your my content folder it can become a long list that becomes a little bit difficult to search through all right those of you that know when you bookmark pages in google and your bookmarks list just becomes and then you have to go back scroll through and figure out what they are if you start early on and you put things uh, in an organization uh, makes things a lot easier to find later okay so Back to uh, this individual uh, video clip that I found. Uh, so again, we've talked about the quick list, we've talked about the content, we've talked about downloading it. The other items that are on here are if you are interested in having your students view it on their individual computers. If you very easily just want the link that you're gonna provide to the students, you can copy the link right here. Now it's on my clipboard. I can post that in my learning management system. I can post it in my Google Classroom. I can send it in an email, whatever it might be. That's the easiest way to get the link to that individual uh, video segment or whatever that multimedia is. I'd recommend using this button here as opposed to going up to the top and copying the website up here. All right, that makes sure it has all the information in the link so that the students log in correctly. All right. Also here is a share button that will take you to some of your different learning management systems. You can copy the link here again, but also depending on if you're a Google Classroom user, a Schoology user, Teams or Canvas user, you can share directly to those learning management systems. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit too, because within each of those learning management systems, if you have what's called the LTI turned on, you can even search within those and assign things directly within those individual learning management systems. Okay. And then the last thing in here is what's called assign. So if I go back to the page right here, sorry, let me go back to the home page. The button that was up here was the my content section. That's what we just talked about right here. But discovery education is also meant to have what's called their own classrooms. So discovery education realized that, especially five, six, seven years ago, not all um, teachers had access to a learning management system. In the last several years, we really have had many cases, no choice but to move to some sort of learning management system to provide resources to our students. But discovery education still has the ability here in the my classroom section for you to set up classrooms that have students assigned to them. Some of your school districts, if you go to that section, may have them automatically managed for you. Uh, if you're a clever school district and you're using the clever sync with inside of discovery education, it may be pulling your rosters right from your student information system like PowerSchool, so it knows already what your classrooms are and it automatically rosters and puts the students in there. The benefit of, of doing it this way is that you can have classrooms in here that you can assign students work and it goes directly to those individual students. All right, so again, I don't want you to do double work. If you have a learning management system that has the students in it, has the rosters they know where to go for to get the assignments, I would continue to use that. But if you'd like, you can also create classrooms or look at the, the automatically created classrooms for you and you can assign to them. So each of these classrooms here, I manually created. And then from there, I can actually add students to that who are on the roster for my individual school. So as an IU 13 educator, these are all the IU 13 uh, students who are within uh, our school roster. So I could go ahead and add and manually search and find all of these students and create a discovery education classroom where I could assign things to it. The benefit of that is when a student logs in to discovery education, right at the top of the screen, they're gonna see the assignments that have currently been assigned uh, for me. So if I were to go back to my video here and click the assign button, you're gonna notice right away here, I can set the name of the title. 
I can give some instructions to the students. And then I can add a date to the assignment. Let's say I want them to do this on Friday and I want it to be done by next Monday. Then I can select the class that it goes to. And I can even select individual students that it goes to as well. So again, by doing this, as soon as the students log in, they will see at the top of the page because they're a view of discovery education is slightly different, slightly uh, less complicated, and they will see the assignment listed right up there at the top for them. So again, the classrooms that you have the ability to manage yourself, or if your school district is managing them for you, you will see them listed here in your My Classroom section. All right, so you could assign a video or an assignment to one individual student. So if you have some real high flyers, maybe some gifted kids who need some extra work and you want to assign some extra videos or some extra multimedia, you could create a classroom with those individual students in it and assign it directly to them. So again, when they log into Discovery Education and they look at what's been assigned, they're going to see that listed right up there at the top. So a lot of features to customize that. If you're an elementary student, generally work with the same 15 to uh, 20, hopefully, kids. Uh, and you only have smaller numbers where you can assign them to, um, it becomes a little bit easier to manage. If you're a secondary teacher and you have 100 kids to manage, uh, it might be a little difficult to always have to manage these classrooms and update the rosters as kids come in and out of your classroom. But again, if your school district is using the, the sync to sync rosters in here, uh, you may notice that right away and see that those classrooms are already set up and the students are already enrolled in them. So that can be real helpful. Okay, so that's uh, what the assign button is here. We're gonna come back to that build an activity one in just a moment. But let me look at, since we're, let me look at my list here to make sure that we've talked about everything listed in here. And I noticed I didn't talk about the one uh, that I wanted to mention about the pre-build activity. So I want to get to that and the subscribe to channels. So let me go back to the home page. And again, when I do a search, let me search for another earth science term on earthquakes, you're going to notice here that there is a channel associated with earthquakes. So along with all the individual uh, items and multimedia that we have in here, there are also channels listed in here. So when I click on the channels, all right, it's slightly different that rather than adding these to my content section, you would use the button here to, to subscribe to it. All right, so this is similar to how YouTube has it set up. When you subscribe to a channel in YouTube, you kind of add that to one of your favorites. And you're saying that uh, I'm going to teach earthquakes relatively often, or I like that topic. So when I subscribe to it, when I go in here, it's always gonna look slightly different because they're gonna add um, new content to it, to the channel, so I have access to it. So back onto my homepage, because I now subscribe to the Earthquake channel, I go to the bottom, there it is for me. That Earthquake channel is always gonna be listed there. I have a lot, I probably have too many listed here, you know, you probably want to limit the number of channels that you have to just maybe the 10 or 12 uh, that might be most interested to you. And you can also drag and drop and reorder those channels uh, based upon your priority. Uh, so all of these channels I've subscribed to, if there's one I no longer want to subscribe to, like this ancient Egypt one, I don't no longer teach that subject. I can click here and say I can unsubscribe and it's no longer listed. I could always search and go find it again, but these are all the channels that I subscribe to. Okay. All right, so let me keep moving here. Uh, because I'm looking at this pre-built activities calendar, uh, this is what I wanna move on to next because this middle section right in here is the next part of what we wanna talk about today. And that's how we can build discovery education content. I know you teachers have so much extra time on your hands. Do you want to go and build all these elaborate activities? Obviously, I'm joking because you don't have that time. But again, what Discovery Education does for you is their educators 
that are part of discovery education are actually in the process of building these activities for you so you can make copies of them and customize them but don't necessarily have to start from scratch you can start from scratch but that can be real difficult and time consuming all right so some of the different types of content that you have available to you you have what are called quizzes you have what are called studio boards, and you have what are called assessments. All right, so this is one of the new features here uh, that has just been released this past summer. Uh, everybody's heard of the program called Edpuzzle that allows you to add interactivity and questions to videos from places like YouTube. Well, because the content inside Discovery Education is behind a paid wall, it doesn't have that as accessible to use for those types of features. So they've built their own one in here called Quizzes that allows you to add, add that interactivity to it. Also, their studio boards that they have allow you to organize the multimedia of the Discovery Education content in a way that students can go through them. A lot of educators have been using PowerPoint and Google Slides as a way to organize content for students to go through in a very easy uh, format. That's what Studio is inside of Discovery Education. It's their version of, let's say, Google Slides that allows you to put uh, different content on slides with maybe a little bit of interactivity and has students based on lessons go through some different videos. And then the last one here is an assessment builder. So again, uh, Discovery Education has a little bit of a learning management style to it where it has some interactivity and quizzes with questions that are already built in where you could have students take uh, pre-made assessments on topics where they answer the questions uh, and it grades it right there for them. All right, so I don't have a lot of time to go through each of these, but I do wanna show them to you because again, uh, this activity center is built on the idea of these studio boards. So when I click on that activity center, you're gonna notice based upon grade levels and they go up only to uh, grades eight right now, uh, they're working on a high school edition soon, but each of these activity centers, we focus on K to two and click on view. This is for the month of October. And just for the month of October, you've noticed they've created a studio board with activities for every one of the days of the calendar. All right, so without you having to do anything, you can create a copy of this or you can assign it or share the link to your students where they each day have a different activity that's already been pre-assigned to them. So what I love about this is if you have some say high flying students who are whipping through some of the uh, independent work that you have for them, you could always post the month's uh, studio board for those students and knowing that it's a K to two grade level for your primary kiddos uh, where they could go in there and they'll have something slightly different to do each day that they're in there. So for example, on October 6th, there was a science activity built uh, that talks about the seasons. So this is the studio board here that has a quick four slides built in and students will know very easily how to navigate by clicking on the next. They have uh, buttons built into it where they can learn more, they can challenge themselves, and there are things that they can click on that takes them within Discovery Education. Very easy for the students to find. So this is an interactive about my uh, four seasons already built for me uh, that I can go into and as I interact, uh, they're gonna hopefully use some terminology and some words that the students will be able to understand. Again, your students at this level will need to be able to read uh, a little bit to follow through, but even without being able to read all of the words, students know what that button means and they know when they click on that, there's gonna be a video for them to go through. So again, very short, but built for you for the entire month of October. The November calendar is already out and I'm gonna post the link to that. It just got released. Uh, so you can go in there and actually look at what November has coming up. And for each of the months, you could post the links and students could even go back. It's not like this October 21 activity calendar will disappear at any time. Uh, you can always find that and use it. 
So any one of these board builder activities that you have, uh, you'll notice the copy button is there for you. All right, that's for you as a teacher. So any of these studio board lessons that they have built. So this one here is a K to two lesson about ending punctuation. It's 15 different slides that talks about the punctuation using nice colorful terms, backgrounds, and maybe 15 slides is too much for you. Well, you could go ahead and just make a copy of that. And if you make a copy, it's gonna be added to your studio board section where you can go in here and you can customize it and make it what you'd like. So now you have the tools over here on the left where you can uh, change and you can edit some of the slides and terminology and make it perhaps what you want. But if you like it just the way it is, you can assign it to the students and they can, can go through it. Uh, but once you click the edit button, you now have the ability to, to change it, to customize it. Uh, maybe you'd like a different background. But you also can uh, build into some teacher notes that goes along with it. And the other thing I wanna mention to you, which is really powerful, is it has this immersive reader function built into it as well. So if you know what immersive reader is, it breaks down the words that are on the page for the students so that when they hit grammar the play focus, button, using periods, grammar focus, using question marks, grammar focus, it will build in everything that's on that page. You can read it to the students. So real nice feature so that for some of the struggling readers or those that don't have necessarily the knowledge of the language, uh, every one of the studio boards, every page of the studio board has the immersive reader function built into it. So when you click on it, you can hit the play button. What does autumn look and feel like? Watch the video to learn more. You can even customize it to make the text larger. Uh, if the screen uh, is too bright, you can go down to uh, a dark colored screen and uh, it will play it in here as well. You can even change if you'd like uh, the voice selection and you can even slow it down for the students More. as well. Fix the sentences. Make sure you check for ending pun. So those accessibility features are built into every studio board. So it makes it very nice that they can actually hear the words that are on here. And when they click on the video- What about you kiddo? Watch it. What's your favorite season? They can also My turn. My favorite season is the one after summer. There's closed oh, captions. Oh, that's autumn. On as well. Yes. Now this one only has it in English, but some of the videos have it in other languages as well. So again, you'll notice but I have I like the ability to, to customize this because I made a copy of it for me. I can also share this. If I wanted to share it with another uh, educator in my building, we could work on it together. And you could also make copies of these and share them with students. So students can build these studio boards as well. So just like you have Google slideshows where students can work together to build out multiple slides, uh, students can do this as well. So these are ones that are already built and you can, you can build them and edit the ones that are in there, but also in your studio section, which I wanna go back to so you can see where this is now located. Is if I go into studio, here's where I can find all of the studios that I've made my own copies of. So this is the slideshow that I just made a copy of this afternoon. And I can go back in it and I continue to edit and change what's in here. Uh, but I can also find any of those that were shared with me with other educators, uh, any that have been assigned to me or any that I've trashed in the past, I can restore them in here. Okay, but I can also create them new straight from studio. Uh, and this is the other thing that I wanted to show you so you know the difference between these two terms. A studio board is one that can continue to grow as large as you want. So think of this as a poster board, a digital poster board that can grow and grow uh, vertically as much as you'd like. So on one individual page, you can put as much content as you want on there, as opposed to a slideshow, which is like your Google slideshow, where it's a confined space on the screen and they're hitting the next button to go to each of the pages. 
So you can create boards, slideshows, depending upon just how you want uh, to organize the content. But there's also these great activity templates here where you can use what are called their spotlight on strategies. And again, these are educational strategies for using content within Discovery Education. Another reason why I love Discovery Ed because they have those uh, ideas built in because they know teachers want to use their content, but they also want to use it in a way that's specifically uh, instructing the students. So for example, there's a great strategy here called AEIOU. And let's say I want to build a studio board. I can actually use the template that's in here to build this activity. And this is just one example of it. It's one slide right here. And I want to create this so that I put my own video right in here that I want. And maybe I want to call it storms. And the video I want to put in here, I'm going to put the one in from my quick list. Oh, I took it out of my quick list. I'm going to go back to my content, go to my earth science folder. See if it uh, picked the right one. I don't know if it picked the right one, actually. Let me try that again. I'm going to add uh, from my content. I'm going to search through my content. It's having a little trouble searching right now. I think I'm taxing my computer a little bit. It's not letting me get in here. Oh, there it finally did. See if I can get in there. Well, anyway, that's how you can add those individual videos. And again, I think my computer is a little taxed here because I'm zooming at the same time. And there you can see just these very quick little responses where students go to this slide and they have to describe it with an adjective, an emotion, something interesting, something oh that surprised them, something um where they have questions. And right on the page, it has a place for them to answer it right in there. So again, these are those studio boards that have the ability uh, to customize based upon these individual templates that are in there. Okay. All right, so I don't wanna keep you too much longer. I'm kind of running out of my 45 minutes of time. Those were the studio boards and the activities that were built into it. Uh, they can be searched through here. So as you search for different topics, you might find studio boards listed you might find studio slideshows listed. All of them can be used as they are, or you can build out your own and edit those uh, that already exist or start from scratch and use them from the activity templates that are in there. Uh, this, the quiz feature here, again, I won't have time to really get into, uh, but I'll just mention back from my slideshow here, uh, the quiz feature is what allows you to build out that interactivity where you can show a video to the students, ask them some questions along the way, and just adds a little level of accountability if the students are watching the video, where you can ask individual questions to them that are built in. Because this is such a new feature, they're building more and more of these video quizzes. So eventually, I think a lot of the more popular videos will have quizzes already made for you. Uh, but you can also use these videos so that you show them in class and actually ask live questions to the students. So maybe they're on their computers, they're watching the video up there on the screen. Uh, when you pause the video and you ask the class a verbal question or you write it on the board, they can actually type the answer right in there and all of those answers come into you. So these are some of the, uh, the features that, that are, make this a little bit more intricate. And there's a link right in here to a studio board that describes how to do the quizzes. And I'll provide you with the link to that as well. So you can kind of walk through at your own pace to learn how you can use that feature. All right, so that's the uh, studio board. We talked about the difference between a board and a slideshow. The assessment builders are those quizzes. Uh, the share and assigning resources. We talked a little bit about this already. Uh, the one thing I didn't mention as much is this LMS integration with Schoology and Google Classroom. So let me mention this to you. Uh, we have Schoology here at IU13. So for example, here is a course within IU13 built in Schoology. 
If you're a Schoology school, you may have the Discovery Education feature turned on for your instance of Schoology. We do here at IU 13. So you'll notice there's a button right here called Discovery Education, which means I can be inside of Schoology and I can search through Discovery Education without going there in a separate tab. So all of that same buttons that are up here at the top, all of my recently viewed, I can get to without even leaving Schoology. I can search those topics as well right inside here. Because that's been added to Schoology, if I wanna add a material to Schoology and I just wanna to click to add something new, you'll also see Discovery Education listed here so that very quickly I can go to my content We'll see how this one works. I can go to Earth Science, there it is. And there's my storms video that I put in my content. I can click embed right here and it's gonna automatically put it right there in Schoology for those students to make it available to them. So real simple way that I don't have to copy the link, create a new activity, post the link, just very quickly right side inside of Schoology, I can do that. If you're a Canvas school or a Google Classroom school, uh, something similar is built out that way uh, where you can put those things right in there. So again, if you have an individual video and uh, you have the assign button, we go here. If I were to go to assign, sorry, if I were to go to share, at Google Classroom, it right to that share to Google Classroom. And you could post it there. All right. And again, look over my list, see what else I need to show you. We talked about this. All right. So just let me wrap up the last five minutes. Next steps that you might have or might be interested in. Uh, this educator support button that you're going to find in the top right hand corner of your Discovery Education homepage, right up here, is where you can go to find help. Uh, to make connections with other educators. Uh, that's where you're gonna find uh, things like professional learning opportunities, uh, the spotlight on strategies that I mentioned, but also where you can get other uh, teacher support. And if you'd like to become part of the Discovery Education Network, that Den Star that I talked about that I'm a part of, uh, you can learn more about it there. Okay, also I'll mention to you uh, where you can find updates within IU 13. So I mentioned to you that the Discovery Education November calendar is out. So this link right here to uh, our IMS uh, website or our blog has where we post uh, updates to all of our programs, including Discovery Education. So uh, the one coming up right now, I just posted this today and I'll put it in the chat and I'll put uh, the link to the slideshow in the chat as well, as well, if you're watching the recording, you can find the YouTube and the, the uh, link to this page in the, uh, the notes below. Uh, but you'll see right in here, just recently released uh, a link to the November K2 activity calendar that was just created and posted. So if you're already looking ahead to November, all of the activities have built for the month of November, usually very seasonable. Uh, you know, they got a Thanksgiving version in here, as well as a Hanukkah one, all different types of cultures and uh, activities uh, for your students to have pre-made that you don't have to do for them. So great feature. So you can find that you can uh, from our blog, uh, you can find us on social media. We post the updates on Twitter uh, at IMS, or I'm sorry, at IU13 IMS. You can also from here, if you want to go down and put your email in here, you can subscribe so you get all of our updates sent to you uh, via email. So not only do we post Discovery Education here, I'll also kind of spotlight many of our other tools that we have within the IMS, things like BrainPop, OverDrive, Gale Research Databases, all of these current IMS tools are available to you and your school district at no additional cost. Uh, so you have access to all of them. Today, we just focus on Discovery Education, but as you can see in one of our most recent posts here, uh, Discovery Education is just one of the showcase items that we have for this fall. Brain Pop will be coming up next week. It starts at 7.30, which may be not a good time for all of you, but again, it is being recorded 
So you'd be able, if you register to get that recording later, or we'll post that out too within the blogs, you would have access to that. Okay, thank you so much for attending today. I know it went a little bit long. I appreciate you sticking with me. Uh, again, this recording, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that now.